Hello there and welcome back to the ARC for Security Open Source YouTube channel. My name is Anais, I'm the Open Source Developer Advocate here in Accra. And in this video, I'm going to show you one of the new features that we've added to the latest trivia release, version 0.45.0. Now you can actually apply more filters to your trivia ignore file. The trivia ignore file allows you to specify, well so far, specify the misconfiguration or vulnerability ID that you would like to have ignored. However, that trivia ignore file would either be applied if it's part of the root repository or from your scanning repository on your entire scanning resources. So you would have to ignore a vulnerability across all of your resources or you would have to specify different trivia ignore files and then parse them as part of a flag into different trivia commands. However, now with the new features, you can specify one trivia ignore file and then specify in which directories, which repositories, which resources uh, the, the vulnerability or the misconfiguration or similar would actually be ignored. Let's check it out. So within the Aqua Security GitHub organization, we have our trivia repository with the source code and any additional resources. Within the discussion section, you can either post your questions, uh, comments, suggestions, feedback, any bugs, anything you would like to share. And also we publish, every time we have a release, our release notes. Now we have releases on a fairly regular basis. So check those out to be aware of any enhancements, features, uh, bug fixes, anything you should be aware of. Check out the release notes. Now here we have enhanced.triviaignore support. We got lots and lots of different questions from across the community on how you can uh, change the trivia ignore file to basically apply specific um, vulnerabilities to ignore them uh, just for specific resources. Now we can head over to the documentation. This is part of filtering. So filtering within the documentation shows you how you can filter the scan result, the output of your scans. And one of them is filtering by ID. Now we have the dot trivi ignore file, which is how it used to be. So basically you would specify a dot trivi ignore file, for example, in your root repository, root directory, and then you would specify the different CVEs and as well as misconfiguration issues um, that you, or like secrets that you would like to have ignored in the scan output. Now, if you then perform a scan, the .trivia ignore file, if it's as part of the repository within which you perform the scan, uh, it will automatically be passed in. And you can check that if you add dash dash debug at the end of your Trivi uh, security scan. So this is how it used to be. Now we've made a few changes, let's say. This is your new .triviaignore.yaml manifest. And in this one, you can specify specific vulnerabilities you would like to have ignored, specific misconfiguration secrets and licenses that you don't want to have reported upon within your scan output. Now, additionally, while well, you can specify the IDs that you would like to have ignored uh, within each section, you can also specify the path of that resource uh, that this ignore statement, that this ignore ID basically applies to. So for instance, this misconfiguration should only be applied to this specific Docker file within this path. It should not be applied to any other resource I'm scanning for misconfiguration issues. Now, at the moment, since this is still an experimental feature, you have to pass in the .triviaignore.yaml manifest as part of the dash dash ignore file. Let's see an example. So before I would call this just .triviaignore. Now I have to call the .triviaignore.yaml. Now at the moment, there's nothing specified in here. And I can perform, for example, a misconfiguration scan of all of my bad infrastructure's code resources that are in this directory. So I do trivi config and I just specify the directory that I would like to scan. Uh, now, here we can see, first of all, that in our Docker file that has been scanned. So let's take a look. So here our bad Kubernetes manifest has been scanned and our terraform cluster.tf has also been scanned. Now, now our simple um, .trivi ignore file would have looked something like this. How can you find these IDs? Well, if I perform a scan, I, I'm provided with this URL. And usually the AVD or like the ID is right at the end of the URL. Now I can also open this URL to the AVD section. And then I'm also provided here in the right box 
with my ID. Now this is the ID that you want to use in your .triviignore or .triviignore.yama manifest. This is how you can find the ID. Now we want to use our advanced uh, .triviignore.yama manifest. So I've already set something up here and I'm just going to copy that into my root directory. So in here I specified that I want to ignore this specific vulnerability and as part of my for example container image scans then I want to ignore these uh, misconfigurations. So for example in my terraform.cluster.tf I want to ignore the 0, 0, uh, 0, 005, this one, misconfiguration. I basically want to ignore that. So now that it's in here, so to use this .trivi ignore the YAML manifest, I use the following command. I use trivi, like before, config, and then dash dash ignore file. And I specify the ignore file where it is. I could again also have different ignore files for different scans or for different environments. I can specify different ignore files and then pass them in, right? Um, so as you can see, trivi is very modular in that sense. Um, and then I again specify the directory that I would like to scan and I perform the same scan again. Now in the output here, I now don't have the 0005 uh, <laughs> misconfiguration being ignored. Uh, being reported upon. It's being ignored. Now, how do you specify this path? Well, it depends slightly on the resource, the target that I pass in into the scan. So if you perform the normal scan without the .trivi ignore file, you will be provided with the path. And you can use this path like so into in your .trivi ignore.yaml manifest directly. Now you have to be careful with the path because it's not going to work if you uh, do an absolute path, right? It has to be um, exactly like here in the scan output specified. Now another nice feature is that you can also specify when you want this um, ID or like you ignoring this ID to be expired. So you can add an expired at and then a date at which you want to have it expired. So for example, the 1st of the 9th, 2023 is already passed. So we should again see this ID, this misconfiguration being reported upon when I perform my uh, scan. As you can see here, now it shows back up as this date has already been passed. So you can, for example, set yourself, let's say you want to only ignore a specific misconfiguration or a specific vulnerability for a month. And then you want to check back in if there's, for example, a fix available. So. Trivi allows you as part of the filtering, you can also ignore um, vulnerabilities, for example, by status. So you can say you only want to have the vulnerabilities uh, shown to you that have a fix available and ignore all of them that don't have a fix available. Now, let's say you don't want to do it to that extent. You still want to see vulnerabilities that don't have a fix available because you might want to switch to a different resource that don't have the vulnerability. What you can do is, you can specify for those that you actually want to ignore as, and they don't have a fix available, you can set like an expiration date. Now do check out the documentation, they also link below in the description um, that provide more useful resources. Like always, I really hope this video was useful. If it was, it would mean a lot to myself as well as to all of the contributors. If you could give Trivi a star on GitHub, the link to the repository is down in the description as well as the documentation and the other resources that I've used throughout this video. Now, if you would like to stay up to date with future content, then please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming videos. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, either comment them down below in this video or join our Slack community. The link is also down below in the description. Join us on Slack, get involved, uh, share your thoughts, ideas and your use cases of Trivi with the community. Now, I really hope to see you there uh, in one of our next videos. Have an amazing day. Bye bye.